Hello everybody, my name is Michael, and in today's video what we're going to be doing is this right here. So if that looks exciting to you guys, please carry on and watch the video. Oh, and just one more thing before we go. Please consider like, commenting, and subscribing if you enjoy the video. But now with all that out of the way, let's carry on with the video. Okay, so to start off painting Dritz here, what all I've done is I've given him a Xenothal Prime, which is a black base coat with a white spray over top to really emphasize those shadows and highlights. So we've got nice, clear, and easy direction to follow while we're painting. And we want to start off with Dritz skin here, and using under dark grey is a good color to go here. It's sort of a purplish grayish tone, and since Dritz, of course, is a drow, it's going to be a great starting place for our colors. And it's just a matter of getting nice smooth coats of paint on here so keep it relatively thin and don't be afraid to use more than one or two coats to get a really good nice smooth even coverage then once we have his skin base coated up we're going to come in now with our underdark gray again with just a little bit of Rikon flesh shade mix and sort of a roughly 50 50 mixture or two parts well whatever you sort of feels right for a highlight skin here it's a little bit hard to tell how much you want you might want to go a little bit brighter than i did or a little bit darker so just coming in here and then very carefully coming in to pick out those highlighted areas so we want to go for those eyebrows the bridge of the nose a little bit of the chin and our most prominent fingers that are facing towards us in the sunlight then once we have those areas all highlighted up it's time to come in with a wash now we're going to come in with some druchi violet which is going to be a nice very uh, purple wash and it's going to really help sell the effect of a drow skin uh, one thing to know too while uh, giving this wash over the uh, skin here is i painted in his eyes now uh, this was very very difficult to do on camera i tried to do it a couple of times on camera and get the footage but his eyes are so small and fine that i couldn't quite get the focus right and uh, concentrate on painting those eyes properly as well so i had to do that little bit off camera but it's just of course uh the same way that i usually do eyes so don't be afraid there really spend some time if you want to get those eyes on but they're very very small and hard to see then once our wash is completely dry what we're going to do now is come in with some basalt gray and we're going to be using this for his uh, trousers and his uh, shirt as well that he has here the underneath clothing of his armor we should say more than anything uh, going with a nice sort of grayish base so now i've been trying to follow the official uh, artwork and um, iconic sort of pictures of mr dritz the word in here to try follow along if i get and it switches between different browns and grays uh, even purples sometimes so it's really up to you what you want to do here but i'm going to go with a nice sort of dark really sort of blackish gray color in here and i think this is going to work out nicely with especially once we place all those other colors on from his armor and stuff as well then once we have that base coat down what we're doing is coming in with our first highlight and we're going to start off with uniform gray to do this now uniform gray is a bit of a bluish gray in here so it's going to add a little bit of uh, interest to the piece with the highlights as well so i want to go with a little bit of a, a bluish tone highlight so going with our uniform gray is going to be a nice choice to help sell this effect anyway hopefully is the plan so we'll see how well that goes but just a matter of coming in and picking out those sort of nice natural creases and folds that are in this miniature as well it's very well sculpted this miniature with nice areas to paint so it can be nice and easy to pick those sort of highlight and detailed bits out then once we have those highlights complete what we're doing now is coming in with one more highlight which is going to be a dark sea gray which is also a very lightish gray and hopefully with that uh, blue tone underneath we won't get an intense blue i didn't want an intense blue i just want a subtle bluish tone so having that as part of the highlights and then coming in with our dark sea gray in here to finish off the highlights and as uh i don't know if i mentioned this before but as we're doing the highlights i'm getting slowly less and less highlight in each part and picking out more points so as it comes into those higher colors it's getting smaller and smaller like the sun is getting more intense into those areas that are spot hit highlighted uh, with the miniature so it's just a matter of going around and being careful about where you're placing them then once we have that complete we're going to come in now with a wash i'm going to be using non oil to do this because i said i wanted to do a sort of a blackish gray uh undercolor for his uh, uh pants and his shirt that he's wearing so uh known oil of course is going to be a natural choice for this and since we've got all those different highlights in there placing the wash over top it's going to try and merge them together since i'm trying out this technique with my painting is placing all the highlights and stuff on there first then washing over top and sort of blending it smoother together it is my theory anyway behind this so we'll see how well it comes out in the end 
Then once we have our wash completely dry, it's time to move on to our next area and we're going to be starting off the armor for this. So we're going to be using rigid leather for this, which is sort of a, a reddish brown, a sort of subtle reddish brown. Uh, not so intense as some of the other reddish browns I use, so it's very, very close to the actual armor that Dritz wears. Uh, I spent a little bit of time researching and looking up at the paints I had and got as close as I possibly could to his official artwork and uh, armor color. So, especially since we've got that Dark Alliance game coming out, and this is why I'm painting up the miniature to celebrate uh, Mr. Dritz here, so... Uh, I want to try and get it as accurate as possible, so if people want to try and uh, paint up Dritz as you see him in official artworks and that, this is going to be a great reference guide for that. Then once that layer is completely base coated down, we're coming now on some mahogany brown. And this I'm just going to be using for the straps that uh, Dritz has on him. He has those nice big wide belts and straps all over him, so I'm going to be picking those out with mahogany brown um, to try and vary the colour that we have on here and not make it all the exact same brown um i've seen uh as, even in his official artwork and even in the game that's coming out uh it's very very <laughs> similar and i wanted to just put a little bit more detail into that um and try and differentiate that color just a little bit so we when we're seeing it on the tabletop we can see that there's a couple of different colors there from a distance and then once we have those picked out we're going to come in now with some charred brown this is going to be the last brown we're using for our uh, armor and stuff and this is not actually for the armor this is for the pouches that he has over him he has two pouches on each side of his uh waist there and i'm just going to be using charred brown it's a nice deep dark brown you could also use a black for this um but i'm just going here with uh browns all over top like i said i'm trying to follow the official artwork and he's very very uh brown leathers on his armor so just different colors of brown to variate it up and then I'm going to do something a little bit different on my models than I usually do, is I'm going to be trying to add in a little bit of uh, subtle sort of texture and damage and wear and tear on uh, our miniature here, and that's just by coming in with an even lighter brown uh, than before. Now this is totally up to you what you want to use here. Um, it could be very in, in colours of brown, so I'm just coming in here with a slightly lighter brown than I'm using. A, a leather brown, I'm pretty sure, is what I used to do here. And I'm just going around picking out scratches, dotting in places, so it looks like our armour is worn and torn, and looks like he really is a rugged hero, and he uses his armour quite a lot. Then with some of those areas picked out, what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some cavalry brown. And what I'm going to be doing with our cavalry brown here is I'm just going to be picking out the handles on uh, Dritz's weapons here now. I can't replicate the exact uh, swords he has because these are so microscopic in detail and the only references I could find of them, I couldn't quite see uh, what swords he has. He usually has them put away or he has just one out and they're just plain metal. So I wanted to do a little bit of colour in there and cavalry brown for our handles is what I am just, just chose to do here, add a little bit of colour. Then once we have that complete, what we're going to be doing now is giving a wash over the entirety of everything we just painted in our browns. And of course we're going to be using Agrax Earthshade to do this. Now of course you can use any sort of brown wash here. Uh, just Agrax Earthshade is what I have on here and I love the effect it gives off. And it's just a matter of coming in, giving good overall wash, but being very careful that we don't get it over anywhere that we've used a wash before. Now I've used a lot of... Um, washes in between steps here which I don't usually do too often so I'm trying to variate my um, painting style a little bit by adding in washes in different parts and I'm not just saving a wash all for the end and that, that's where I tend to sort of use one or maybe two washes at most to do an entirety of a miniature so I'm really focusing on different places and different effects so adding in different colored washes to those areas are really going to help bring out the piece a little bit more. Then once we have that complete, we're going to come in now and we're going to start with his cape, his iconic green cape he always wears. And I'm going to be starting with Nocturna Shadow, which is a very dark green. And I'm going to be placing that into the nicely sculpted recesses that we have here on our miniature. So I'm going for the recesses and places where shadow would naturally sort of be uh, on the miniature. So just a matter of using your own judgment here where you feel like um, some shadow areas will be. Maybe you just want to place some in for some actual interest in the piece, but we definitely do want to get into those nice recesses sculpted and those wavy patterns in the cloak. And then I'm going to use my secret technique of hiding what I'm doing and not showing you <laughs> by placing it all behind my thumb because that's more interesting than what I'm painting right now. So I <laughs> hope this is going to be useful. So let's move on to the next step. So something you can actually see rather than me trying to hide it all with my thumb. Then now we've picked out those shadow areas. No helps with my thumb there to show you how to do that. We're going to come in with another 
color and this is going to be dark green and this is going to be the main color of Dritz's cloak here it's very similar to the actual cloak he wears so we want to be pretty um, liberal with this color and really get those high points in there and you can see that that nocturnal shadow is so dark that it is uh, very uh, clashing you can see it right under my paint especially since my paint is thinned out you can very easily see it underneath there so I'm going to need quite a few layers to build it up and sort of blend those two colors together but it's just going to take a matter of time waiting for each layer to dry and placing a new one on top until you get a nice happy medium that you're with with those two colors blended together then now we have that cloak nice and complete it's time to come in with another wash and this one is a thonian camera shade which is a green wash and so um, I didn't want to go with the uh, very uh, worn down sort of gritty in the muck um, washes that I usually do, which is usually brown wash or a black wash in here. I want to add some vibrancy, and since we are doing drips here in his iconic uh, outfit, I want to go with as natural as I can and really emphasizing that. So I don't want to dirty him down, so going with a nice green wash to help emphasize that green cloak. Then once we have our cloak completely dry, we can start moving on to another area, and I'm going to be using ivory to do this, and this is going to be for the fur trim around Dritz's iconic cloak, as well as, of course, his hair, that is, of course, a very, very sort of bright white, and since he has a drow, they naturally have very white hair, um, we want to be matching that style as much as I possibly can. So giving an overall coat there. So it's going to take a couple of coats, especially since I've got a little bleed over and other colours were painted on here. So don't be afraid to spend the time here and really get those two areas as sort of white as you can. But of course this is ivory, so it's just a slight off-white. I don't want to go pure white with that. It would be too crazy a colour, I think. Then once we have that hair all picked out, we're going to come in and start with our weapons. So using some gun metal here to be picking out his swords. We want to be giving a nice overall uh, coat here, and I'm just using Vallejo gun metal here, which is a nice sort of uh, dark metal. So it's going to be a good base coat to start with the metal, and a good place where we can highlight up to later on. And of course, you also want to pick out the little uh, details that he has on him as well. So don't forget the little belt buckles, and he has some uh, metal studs on a, the front of his armor as well, so don't forget to pick those out as well. Being very careful, as you can see I've got a fine tip on my brush, to really pick just those little tips out, and really give emphasis to that armor. Then we, once we have all the metallic areas picked out, we're going to come in with some Seraphim Sepia wash, and for the Seraphim Sepia I'm going to be using this just for around the fur white fur cloak of uh, Dritz's uh, fur hood that he has on his cloak here so um, it's going to give a different color uh, and really help hopefully emphasize that it's a, a furred creature um, that's white but sort of has a, a other distinct color and it's to really separate it out from his hair and because like I said I wanted to separate the color of our two whites with the uh, hair and the fur cloak is so I'm going to be using known oil to be doing his hair which is going to darken down those recesses in the area now it's going to really taint up and change the color of his hair but don't worry we're going to come back in with some highlights to fix it up and make it give off that he actually has white hair but this is more for the shadows and this is a good way to show as well that by having two different washes on the exact same color can really change an entire effect of a piece and as well as that we also want to quickly go over our weapons here as well since we've got the known oil out and that you can see that by having those two different colored washes we've really separated those two out even though they're the complete same color and then once our wash is completely dry we can come back in with our ivory now and pick out those white areas that we want now remember ivory is an off-white so it's not 100 percent pure white you could come in with a pure white hair but i think it would be too intense and it would look a little uh, weird on camera i think if i went with a complete bright white on the piece so that's why i'm sticking with our ivory here um, and then it's just a matter of coming in, especially for Dritz's nice long flowing hair he has in the breeze, is we want to go around, and as you can see, I'm using more the edge of my brush than the point of my brush to pick out uh, the various waves in here. And as well as that, I'm also going to be doing sort of like a semi-dry brush slash like overbrush of um, the fur trim as well. And then with that complete, what we're going to be doing now is coming in with our last highlight, and that is going to be using Shining Silver. Shining Silver, of course, is a very, very bright uh, silver color, so it's going to be perfect for all the highlights of our 
metallic area. So paying more attention to the blades since they're going to be naturally catching in that sunlight with his awesome pose where he's pointing out his sword uh, threateningly. So we want to get that nice gleaming effect off the sword. With all that complete, we have finally finished painting up Dritzdo Erden from the Dungeons and Dragons miniature range by Gale Force 9. And of course I painted up Mr. Dritz here to celebrate the release of Dark Alliance, a video game coming out featuring Mr. Dritzdo Erden. I had the miniature around, I hadn't painted it up yet, and I thought what better opportunity to paint up Dritz than right now, just before the game's release. So... I hope this video has been useful for you guys, whether you want to follow along, or you just want to use this video for some inspiration and painting up some cool minis. But with all that said guys, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I can't wait to see you all in the next video.